Hi, Year 3. This is your Friday maths lesson. Can you check you've got your maths book, your sharp pencil and your ruler, please? We've got the date and hello today on the screen. So can you copy that into your book, underline it with a ruler and have a go at the activities on the screen, please? Well done. So yesterday we were adding money. Today we're going to be subtracting money, so we're going to be doing the opposite. Let's look at these questions to see how we got on. Question one. Ron has these coins. He spends 52p. How much does he have left? I'm going to do some crossing out to help me here. He spends 52p. Let's look at what's left. I've got two pounds and 21p. Tick, tick, got it right. Question two, what is one pound subtract 20p? Top tip, 100 pence is the same as one, one pound. So if we read that as 100, what is 100 subtract 20? The answer would be 80p. What is one pound subtract 25? 75p. Tick those if you got them correct. Well done. Right, we're going to be looking at our bar model, uh, our part whole models again. And they're a bit, they're very similar to our bar models, aren't they? They show us what the whole part is and they show us what the smaller parts are. Now, because we're doing subtraction today, we're going to have different parts that are um, missing and different parts that are filled up. So yesterday when we were adding, it was the whole part that we had to find, wasn't it? Today, because we're subtracting, we've got the whole part because we know that when we subtract something, we always have the bigger number at the beginning, don't we? So we've got the whole part, we've got one of the parts, and we need to find out what the other smaller part is. So have a think, what calculation are we going to need to find out what this missing number is? What calculation are we going to be doing? Pause the video and have a think. Well done. So we're going to be finding out what this total is, which is five pounds 50, five pounds 50, take away two pounds 10p that's the calculation five pounds 50 take away two pounds 10p and this little part here is the bit here we want to find okay now let me show you two different methods of how to do this listen to both methods and you can then choose which method you think um, you would find the easiest and you would choose that to use. My first method, I'm going to have a look at the whole part here and I'm going to be doing some exchange, some converting we could call it. I'm going to convert my five pound note into five pound coins. When we're dealing with coins as the parts here, it's much easier if we can convert it into coins. And I'm going to do the same for my 50p. I'm going to convert my 50p into five 10p's and see how I've done that. And now if I look at this part, I want to take this away from what I've got, don't I? So if I get my pen, I want to take away two pounds and 10p. How much have I got left? Well, I've got three pounds and 40p. So my other part is three pounds and 40 P. That would be my total here as well. So the first method is to actually convert your money you've got here into coins that are going to help you with your taking away. That's the first option. Let's look at another method. So we've got the same question. We're going to listen for this other method of how to do it. I'm going to use my stem sentences to help me with this method. 
First, subtract the pounds. Now, I know I've got five pounds and fifty p as my whole bit, don't I? First, I'm going to just take away the pounds. What's five pounds and fifty p? Take away two pounds. Well, three pounds and fifty p. I've just subtracted those pounds for now. Then subtract the pence. So now I'm going to take that amount, three pounds and fifty p. I'm going to subtract the pence here, which is ten p. So now I have got three pounds and forty p. Was that the same as what we had before? Yes, it was. So there's two methods there that will help us calculate. Now, I want you to have a little think about what method you think will help you today. Which one do you think you might find easiest? I'd like you to have a go at one of these, choosing your method that you'd like to use. You could even have a go at both methods and find, uh, have a think about what you found easiest for the rest of the maths lesson. So pause the video and have a go at one of these, please. OK, well done. So if you chose the first method, I would have converted my £10 note into 10 £1 coins. And I would have converted my 20p coin into 10p's because here I need to take away a 10p. So that makes it really easy for me. And what I would have done is I need to take away this amount. I've got, ooh, that's a two pound coin there. So I need to take away two of those to represent that. Another one there. And then I need to take away a 10p. And that would be my answer. You should have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pounds and 10p. That should have been here. Tiki, if you got that correct, I'm going to just talk through the other method now, if you chose that one. So you had your total. And we needed to subtract the pounds first, didn't we? Because there were three pounds here in this part. You should have got seven pounds and 20p. Then by using that amount, we had to subtract the pence. We had 10p in this part. Seven pounds and 20p take away 10p is seven pounds and 10p and we've got it here i will show you there we are so well done if you were successful with one of those methods okay pop your pencil down this is another listening slide some of you might not get on to um calculating on a number line but i'd like you everybody to listen anyway i'd like everybody to listen so when we have a subtraction calculation, we are finding the difference. That's what we can call it. And we can find the difference in two different ways. I'd like you to watch this. Ron is using a number line to subtract three pounds and 65p from five pounds. So on his number line, he's drawn that five pounds, which is the total, at this end of his number line. And because he's subtracting, he's going to be jumping backwards, isn't he? So, first subtract the pounds. So I'm going to start at the five pounds and the amount I'm taking away is three pounds and 65p. I'm going to subtract that three pounds first. What's five pounds take away three pounds? Uh, two pounds. Then subtract the pence. I've got 65p to take away now. I'm just thinking, is there an easier number I can subtract there? I think I might partition 60 and the five. I might just take away 60p first. I think that might be more helpful for me. Take away 60p. That's meant to be a p. 
Uh, what's two pounds take away 60p? Well, that is one pound and 40p. Use my number bombs there to help me. One pound and 40p. And now I mustn't forget, I still need to take away another 5p, don't I? So what is one pound and 40 take away 5p? It's one pound 35, isn't it? So Ron has one pound and 35p. Can you see what we did there? So we subtracted backwards along the number line, taking off the smaller amount. Let me show you another way of doing this. Okay. Right, Amir has got a different method. He's going to have a go at counting up to find the difference. So on his number line, he's drawn that little part he had. That's where he's going to start today. And he wants to count up to five pounds to find out what that would be. So let's get my pen again. Now, three pounds and 65p. I'm looking at that number and I'm wondering, is there a really easy jump I can do? I might see how much I have to add on there to get to four pounds because that amount is almost four pounds. I'm gonna find out what that is first. So 65, how much more do I add on to 65 to get up to 100? Well, it's 35p. And now I've got a really nice easy jump. Four pounds to five pounds. What was the difference there? It was a pound, wasn't it? So again, my answer is the same as Ron's, which it should be. One pound and 35p was the difference. The difference is one pound and 35p. So um, let's go to the next slide. This is an activity slide um, or it could be a listening slide. If you're feeling pretty confident about your number lines, which I know some of you will be, can you have a go at this answering this question here? What's the missing number using a number line? So um, do that now if you're feeling confident. If you think, oh, I, I could read, I think I would, it would really help me to hear another one being done. Please carry on listening. So your choice, make that decision now. So if we have a look at this bar model, the whole part says two pounds and 15p. And we know that that's the total. One of the parts here is one pound and 90p. And we've got a, a missing part here. The calculation we're going to do is two pounds and 15p take away one pounds and 90p and that will give us our answer here. So let's look at the first way of doing that. Let's look at Amir's way. In fact, because we did it the, the other way around before, we're actually going to look at Ron's way first. I think that will be more helpful for us. Let's look at Ron's way first. Do you remember Ron started with the total and he counted back? Do you remember? So what Ron has done is he started with the total £2.15p and he's first subtracted the pounds. And you can see here we've got one pound he's taken away. And after he's taken that pound away, he's got one pound and 15p left. Then he needs to subtract the pence. Now Ron's done something quite clever here because he's gone to the next pound coin, hasn't he? Just to make things a bit easier for himself. So he's taken off 15p and then he's taken off the other 75p which he needed to take off. So he found that that missing part is 25p. The other method then, so this is um, Amir's method. Do you remember Amir counted up on his calculation? So Amir actually started with the part, this end of his number line, and he's counted up to the nearest pound, which is two pounds, so he's added on 10p. 
And then he's just had to find out how much more to get to the total. So he's found out as well that the, to the missing part is 25p. Tick those if you got those correct on your own and well done if you managed to do that. Last listening slide from me today. I want to give you a little bit of advice for those of you that do get onto the number line questions. When the whole amount and the known part have a very small difference, can you see how £4.85 isn't really that far off £5.30 p? They're quite similar. There's not a lot in them. It is usually easier to count up. Okay, so it's usually easier to um, use a Mears method. Now, if we have a question like this, when the whole part, the whole amount and the known part have a large difference, can you see there's a lot of difference between these two amounts? It is usually easier to take away the part we know. So in which case, using Ron's method would be better, would be easier. Okay. If you get onto those number line questions, can you make sure that you come back to this part in the video if that's helpful for you to remind you of which method is easier depending on what question you're, you're working out. OK, let's move on to our activity, everyone. Good luck. You've got the stem sentences on the screen to help you here. Off you go. Well done, and now for the answers, get your ticks ready, hopefully. Amazing job, well done year three. Upload your work onto Dojo, I can't wait to see it. See you later.